meeting to welcome everybody to the meeting and before we get started just a few announcements um the first is don't forget and I, I, this is probably out of order but don't forget early voting uh, goes through this saturday july 29th and then the election is august 3rd and so if you haven't voted yet please vote that's our good samaritan announcement of the day and then if everybody would silent your phones that would be great uh, we do have a new commissioner that I'm excited to announce, and um, please welcome Matt Smith. We welcome Mr. Smith, and as I try to do, I always try to embarrass the new commissioner, um, but um, it's, it, yeah, it's a rite of passage here. Um, but a few things about Mr. Smith is that he's been with Turner Construction um, for about a dozen years. Overall, he's been in the construction profession for about 15. Um, really interesting fact, he's on the, I'm going to murder this, but it's the Tennessee Equine Advisory Board, which is a horse advisory board, which is really interesting. I would like to know more about that. Um, he's married. He also has a, a two-year-old daughter. And guess what? Today is her birthday. So here he is hanging out with us. So that means we're going to have a really short meeting, knock on wood, to get you home to celebrate birthday. But thank you so much. He's a, a lifelong Nashvillian. Um, for those of you in the, in the public, uh, we have a very... Um, balanced board in my mind with a lot of professionals in the industry, um, whether community activist, attorney, uh, architect, uh, we have a lot, banker, we have a lot of diverse um, professions and diverse people on this board who love Nashville, and I love having that. So welcome to our fun board that sometimes go, goes past midnight. Uh, hopefully not too much, right, Director? Yes. Right. Okay. So we're back uh, being out of order, and we're on item B, which is the adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt? There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And the agenda is adopted. Next is item C, which is the approval of the June 22nd, 2023 minutes, which were also handed out earlier and publicly posted. Is there a motion to adopt? There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And the June 22nd minutes are adopted. We are now on to... Um, the recognition of the council members, but I do want to remind commissioners just we've been in this room before the, the uh, microphones are a little sensitive, so always think of them as being hot. So on, in other words. Okay. Just a reminder for everybody. All right. So next recognition of the council members, and I, I just take the council members, as we see y'all come in, and, and first I saw Councilman uh, Tom Cash. You want to come? You want to wait? Or, okay, no problem. Uh, Councilman Cash is going to wait. And Councilor Murphy, do you want to go? All right, welcome. Thank you. Um, I realize that this is one where I get to, I'm just going to tell you all about my issues and then get out of here. And usually, and it's going to be a short meeting. Like, could you, could you make your agenda longer or something? No. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm always here for long meetings. Um, so what the items before you in my district today, Kathleen Murphy, uh, district 24, 231 Orlando Avenue. Um, so we've got three items. One, uh, I've talked to you about before and it's being deferred until August. It is, um, a development on Charlotte Avenue that I think has a lot of potential if they start listening to your planning staff um, and to the community policy and plan there. And I really think that it should be, as I mentioned before, it needs to be indefinitely deferred. Um, council, uh, Council Lady Brenda Gadd is, Council Lady is soon to be, Brenda Gadd is here who will be representing the district and, and it's not like they're going to be community meetings uh, until at least October. So really, 
I would recommend that y'all just get it off your plate, but that's up to y'all. Um, then I've got two overlays in Sylvan Park. The one on Dakota, and I'm sorry I don't have the item numbers in front of me. The one on Dakota, I'm gonna withdraw. That's one that neighbors have brought to me, and there's about 50-50 support. Unfortunately, this is one where I think we as Metro and Co it's more codes than anything else. We've got to do a better job of getting, explaining the contextual overlays. Um, it's not easy to understand how the math works the way that it's laid out online. And so this is one where um, we've had a lot of misinformation and neighbors feeling pressured by other neighbors. And so I'm going to withdraw that one. And they can, um, if they regroup or come back, they can do that under the next term. But we've already kind of laid that groundwork. And then the- And Council, I think that's item 17 for the record. For Dakota. Dakota Avenue. Dakota Avenue, mm -hmm. yes. And then the other one is Wyoming Avenue. And that one, we've had um, overwhelming support. I know y'all got a letter from one neighbor. I hadn't heard from them. But otherwise, I have not had any opposition to the one on Wyoming. So that one I would like to be moving forward. And I believe that's on consent. So um, with that, I think this is hopefully my last time before you guys. Thank you, Council Lady, and we really appreciate it. I know I've enjoyed working with you, and I know the commissioners have too. It's Thank been you. a pleasure. Thank you and your dad. Long legacy. Thank you. That item was item 16. Thank you. All right, so... Seeing no other council members, I do want to say thank you to Brenda for coming down. It's good to see you, and uh, we appreciate it. Council member elect Brenda Gett. Okay. I think Amelia is, so that leads us to our next item. Uh, seeing no other council members, that leads us to item E, which is items for deferral withdrawal, and I think Amelia is going to take us through that. Okay. Yeah. Amelia? Yeah. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, starting with item E, items for deferral or withdrawal. Um, item number one, uh, 2023 CP 014002, Donaldson Hermitage Old Hickory Community Plan Amendment. The staff recommendation is deferred to the August 24th meeting. Item number two, on page three of your agenda, 2014 SP 050002, staff recommendation is deferred to the September 14th Planning Commission meeting. On page four of your agenda, item number three, 2023 SP 005001, Riverside at Metro Center SP, staff recommendation is deferred to August 24th. Item number four, 2023 SP 054001, Charlotte Pike Mixed Use. Staff recommendation is deferred to the August 24th meeting. Item number five, 2019 S039002, Payne Road Subdivision. Staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Item number six, 2022 S200001, Plan of Hamilton Place. Staff recommendation is to defer to the August 24th meeting. On page five of your agenda, item number eight, 2023Z066PR001, staff recommendation is deferred to September 14th. Item number nine, 2023CP013001, ENIAC Priest Lake Donaldson Hermitage Old Hickory Community Plan Amendment, staff recommendation is deferred to September 14th. Item number 10, 2023 SP 059001, 475 and 487 Humphrey Street. Staff recommendation is deferred to August 24th. On page six of your agenda, item number 13, 2023 SP 069001, 3800 Old Hickory Boulevard. Staff recommendation is deferred to August 24th. On page seven of your agenda, item number 17, 2023 COD009001. Uh, that's the contextual overlay along Dakota Avenue. Staff recommendation is to withdraw. On page eight of your agenda, item number 22, 2023S115001, DC Kelly Subdivision. Staff recommendation is deferred August 24th. And 
on page nine of your agenda, item number 28-2023-Z-084-PR-001, a rezoning along Mary Street. Staff recommendation is deferred to August 24th. Thank you, Amelia. And so, commissioners, <clears throat> these are the, and Amelia, make sure I get these correct for the commissioners. The items for deferral or withdrawal are the following. Items number one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, seventeen, twenty-two, 10, 13, 17, 22, and 28. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, commissioners, you've heard the items for deferral withdrawal. Is there a motion? Motion second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and those items are deferred or withdrawn. So that leads us to our next item on the agenda, which is item F, which is the consent agenda. And Amelia is going to take us through that again. Yeah. Um, items on the consent agenda tonight. Um, I will read through all of the items on the consent agenda and ask if anyone is here in opposition. If so, please raise your hand. And if there is someone in opposition, the items will be presented in the order that they appear on the agenda. If no one is in opposition to the item, the item will be on the consent agenda. Um, and if you could, when you raise your hand, hold it up for a minute so I can turn, twist, double check. Thanks. Um, Starting on page four of your agenda, item number seven, 2023Z037PR001, that's a request to rezone along John L. Copeland Boulevard. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? This item will be on the consent agenda. On page five of your agenda, item number 11, 2022S276001, Burkett Ridge, phase six. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? This item will be placed on the consent agenda. On page six of your agenda, item number 14, 2023 S080001, 1419 Riverside. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number 15A, 2023-SP072001, Grizzard Avenue SP, and the associated case item 15B, 10886P001, Old Trinity Estates, PUD cancellation. Is anyone here in opposition to items 15A or 15B? Those items will be on the consent agenda. On page seven of your agenda, item number 16, 2023, COD 0080001. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number 18, 2023, DDU 002001. This is for a detached accessory dwelling unit overlay along Fairfax and Barton. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number 19, 2023 HP 001001. This is a downtown historic preservation overlay expansion. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? That item will be placed on our agenda to be heard. Continuing on page seven, item number 20, 2023Z005TX001. This is a request to amend Title 17. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? Uh, this item will be on the consent agenda. On page eight of your agenda, item number 21, 2023S105001, the homes at Graycroft. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? This item will be on the consent agenda. Item number 23, 2023S117001, FO Beasley's McFerrin edition. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? And this item will be on the consent agenda. Item number 24, 2023S119001, Hermitage Estates. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? This item will be on the consent agenda. Item number 25, 2023Z075PR001. This is a rezone to R6A on 736 Douglas. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? 
This item will be on the consent agenda. Item number 26, 2023Z076 PR001. This is a request to rezone along Shelby and 10th Avenue, uh, 10th Street. My apologies. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? Seeing no one, this item will be on the consent agenda. Uh, item 27, 2023Z081 PR001. This is a request to rezone along Manchester Avenue. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? This item will be on the consent agenda. Item number 29, 2023Z086 PR001, a rezone along Elizabeth Road. Is anyone here in opposition to this item? Uh, this item will be on the consent agenda. Okay, that was our um, first run through of the consent agenda. Um, now I will run through all of it um, again with the captions. Um, as information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circus, Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. Looking at items on the consent agenda tonight, uh, starting on page four, item number seven, 2023Z037 PR001. That's a request to rezone along John L. Copeland Boulevard. Staff recommendation is to approve. On page five of your agenda, item number 11, 2022S276001, Burkett Ridge phase six. This is a final plat request to create 79 lots along Burkett Ridge. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. On page six of your agenda, item number 14, 2023S080001, 1419 Riverside. This is a request for a final plat to create two lots at 1419 Riverside Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions, including an exception to chapter three for lot frontage and chapter three for lot area. Continuing on page six, item number 15A, 2023 SP072001, Grizzard Avenue, that's a request to rezone from CS and RS5 to SP for properties along Grizzard and Old Trinity Lane. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. In the associated case, item 15B, 10886P001, Old Trinity Estates PUD cancellation. Uh, this is our request to cancel a PUD along Grizzard and Old Trinity Lane. Staff recommendation is to approve if the associated SP is approved and disapprove if the associated SP is not approved. On page seven of your agenda, item number 16, 2023 COD008001. This is a request to apply contextual overlay for properties along Wyoming Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 18, 2023 DDU002001. This is a request to apply a detached accessory dwelling unit overlay for properties along Fairfax and Barton. A staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 20, 2023Z005TX001. This is a request to amend Title 17 um, related to signage and codes. Staff recommendation is to approve. On page eight of your agenda, item number 21, 2023S105001, the homes at Graycroft. This is a request for, request for a final plat to create two lots at 1102 South Graycroft. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions, including an exception to chapter three for lot area. Item number 23, 2023S117001. F.O. Beasley's McFerrin addition to East Nashville 4. This is a request for a final plat approval to create four lots at 615 and 621 North 9th Street. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions, including exceptions to sections, to sections three for lot frontage and for lot area. 
Item number 24, 2023-S119001, Hermitage Estates. This is a final plat approval to, reser to remove reserve parcel status for property along Belinda Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item number 25, 2023-Z075-PR001. This is a request to rezone from SP to R6A for property at 736 Douglas Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 26, 2023-Z076-PR001. This is a request to rezone properties along Shelby Avenue and South 10th Street. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 27, 2023-Z081-PR001. This is a request to rezone from RS10 to R10 for property at 1813 Manchester. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 29, 2023-Z086-PR001. This is a request to rezone from RS10 to R10 for properties at 1811 and 1813 Elizabeth Road. Staff recommendation is to approve. And under item H, other business, items 30, bonus height certification memo for 909 Division Street and 35 except the director's report. Thank you, Amelia. And so, commissioners, here are the items for the to pass on the all together on the consent agenda. Items 7, 11, 14, 15A, 15B, 16, 18, 20, 21, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 30 and 35. Is that correct, Amelia? That's correct. All right, commissioners, you've heard the items to pass on the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Question? Yes. Commissioner, Commissioner, you hold on, Commissioner. You got to turn the mic on. There we go. Thank you. Uh, item 31. Uh, is it not on the consent or? No, we okay. need, we have to consider it um, because we need it in the minutes for the approval. And so uh, what that is, just so everybody knows, is it's the COLA raises and some reclassification raises and uh, the contract for our executive director. So um, we'll get to the discussion during that time frame at the end of the meeting. Um, it, but we have to consider it. Yes, Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, and, and we should have a discussion about it. With so. that, I move to approve consent agenda items with Prop, associated conditions. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And those items are adopted on the consent agenda. Next is, items, is item G, which is the items to be considered on public hearing, which will... I believe, Director, is items number 12 and 19. And then in other business, we will consider item, as we always do, items, well, 31, and then we'll go through the reports of each, each of the commissioners. So <clears throat> before we get started, just a reminder for everybody is that the process, some folks have been here, some have not, so we go through this um, very quickly. First, we do the presentation. We'll open the public hearing. The applicant gets 10 minutes. They can save two of the 10 minutes for rebuttal. Um, and then we go in, everybody will line up. Anyone wishing to speak in support, have two minutes, state your name and address for the, for the record, and then anyone in opposition after everyone speaks in favor. And then we'll have the rebuttal, the council member, and then uh, we'll close the public hearing and then have discussion. So I'd just go through that process just so everybody knows. So we are on to item number 12. Dustin. All right. I'm Dustin Shane, staff planner. This is item 12, Martin Reserve Subdivision. This is a concept plan to create eight lots. And our recommendation is to approve with conditions. Zoning on the site is R20, and it's in the T3 Suburban Neighborhood Maintenance Policy. Here's a look at the, uh, the lot layout proposed. It's eight lots, uh, one new public right-of-way ending in a modified hammerhead turnaround um, with two duplex lots um, identified and stormwater uh, infrastructure there along the ends of um, lots six through eight. 
So this is a planning commission review because it's a major subdivision. There's a new road proposed. It's in the T3 suburban transect, so we apply uh, chapter three. Um, all standards were met, ignore that except right there. I was, when I updated my PowerPoint, I missed that. We had published a disapproval on Friday because not all agencies had approved. Um, the memo on your desk uh, is in reference to all agencies having approved at this point. Um, so moving on, uh, it's, it's zoned R20. It meets all zoning regulations. Um, and as I said, two duplex lots were identified. Uh, code allows 25% of the lots to be duplex. Um, that modified hammerhead turnaround was approved by the fire marshal and by NDOT. Um, just a, a word about that issue with the uh, stormwater infrastructure. It's within private lots. Um, and as I said, it was approved by stormwater after we published the report. Um, typically, we see that infrastructure in common open space, not within private lots. Um, there's nothing technically in the regulations that we found that would prohibit it being in a private lot. It, in fact, it says it could be under an easement or within open space. Um, so stormwater has crafted a condition to require easements uh, to be recorded between a HOA responsible for their maintenance uh, and with Metro uh, so that we have access uh, to them. So just looking at policy real quick. Um, Planning Commission may consider policy, and this is in the T3 neighborhood maintenance uh, transect, and that requires maintaining the general character of suburban neighborhoods while providing for enhanced housing choice and connectivity. So uh, we find that it meets that policy and the zoning, so we recommend approval with conditions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. So commissioners, we'll open this item for public hearing. Is the applicant in the room? Mr. Sloan, welcome. Let's make sure your mic's on. You have to push it, maybe. Yeah, I can just move over. Lisa's not running my time, is she? Okay. Yes. Uh, Doug Sloan, uh, 6354 Torrington Road. I, I represent the applicant. Add them what Dustin's already said. Uh, it is 20,000 square feet lots, uh, which is consistent or larger than the surrounding lots of all the properties in the area, except for the, the one parcel that comes right off of uh, Abbott Martin. But for all, all the other subdivisions surrounding it, they are either 20,000 or less. Uh, and so uh, this development is consistent both with the policy, as Dustin pointed out, and consistent with the surrounding area. Uh, we did have some issues that, that we needed to resolve regarding the stormwater. Uh, there's a fairly uh, a pretty good slope to the back corner where you see the stormwater uh, detention area. Uh, the main concern by stormwater was that 20 years from now, if a tree has grown in the stormwater system, that there's adequate funds to be able to pay to clean that up. And so what we've done is we've set up a system where uh, that will there'll be an easement from those owners to the homeowners association, uh, making the homeowners association uh, responsible for the maintenance of the detention pond and have uh, an easement to the access both the detention pond and the way to get to it. Um, and uh, and then also that will that same easement will then pass on well the easement to the property not the maintenance of uh, the detention pond area will pass on to the stormwater uh, metropolitan stormwater uh, so that's it that was uh, the only little wrinkle in this one but otherwise uh, it meets the policy and the subdivision regs so we thank you for your time if you have any questions uh, we're here thank you thank you sir we'll reserve two minutes for rebuttal all right. Anyone wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'm assuming, Mr. Sloan, you don't want to have a rebuttal. And the council member is 
Mr. Pulley is not here. So seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. And so we're on to the commissioners and we've kind of, instead of calling on everybody on, uh, we've adopted this new process. We, we start with somebody and then um, if y'all want to speak, just raise your hand, we'll put you on a list. And so Commissioner Hanley, you want to start us off? Great, great. Well, no, um, I mean, I, I, I believe, you know, based on the, the memo that we received, you know, what we would have seen this evening would have been just a staff approval with conditions. I don't think there's much to add, but I do like the fact that we are, again, uh, pursuing um, increased density in, in areas of our city to produce housing. So I'm just, I'm glad to see that. I don't really have any further comments. Any other discussion? Uh, seeing none, Commissioner Hanley, you want to make a motion to adopt? Absolutely. Now, I can be corrected if I do this incorrectly, but I'd like to make a motion um, to approve the case and go against the staff recommendation uh, for disapproval. Well, and I think, Lisa, they've updated memo. their position. We, yeah, the, the memo updates our recommendation to approve with conditions, so you can just... Approved Go with, with the staff recommendations. Okay. Yep. So motion is approved to, with conditions. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Ayes have it. And item 12 is adopted. We are on to item number 19. Selena. Go ahead. When you're ready, we're ready. All right, um, Selena Koningstein of the Planning Department presenting item number 19. The request is to expand a historic preservation overlay district uh, to various properties located along 3rd and 4th Avenue North, southwest of Diedrich Street. The staff's recommendation is to approve. The current zoning is downtown code and is intended for high intensity office, retail, restaurant, amusement, and residential use and is designed to create walkable neighborhoods using appropriate building placement and bulk standards. The current downtown historic preservation zoning overlay currently includes two buildings, the J.C. Bradford building at 174th Avenue North, uh, now the Courtyard Marriott, or by Marriott, um, and the U.S. Bank building at 208. 4th Avenue North, now the Noel Hotel, which are part of the Printer, Printer's Alley National Register District. The proposed expansion of the Historic Preservation Overlay District would seek to include a greater geographical area which possess a, possesses a significant concentration, linkage, or con continuity of sites, buildings, structures, or objects which are united by past events or aesthetically by plan or physical development. The policy on the site is T6, downtown core, and it's intended to have the highest intensity of development in the county. Offices are the predominant type of development, although the T6 downtown core uh, contains a diverse array of land uses, including retail, entertainment, uh, institutional uses, government services, and higher density residential. The highest intensity of development is in the central portion of the core, north of Broadway. And this policy and many others support historic preservation. There have been two community meetings, one in March of 2022 and one in June of 2023. And additionally, there was a historic Metro Historic Zoning Commission public hearing in July of 2023 and the Metro Historic Zoning Commission recommended approval. The area recommended for the expansion is a portion of Nashville's historic central business district, um, as well as additional National Register eligible historic buildings. Uh, the proposed district contains 83% contributing historic buildings. Uh, parcels highlighted in purple are those currently included in the downtown historic preservation zoning overlay, and those highlighted in green are proposed to be included. 
Overlays do not replace the base zoning, but provide additional considerations for development in these areas. Future development would be reviewed by the Metro Historic Zoning Commission. And these are some of the examples of the buildings that are um, proposed to be included. And given the goal of historic preservation and the Metro Historic Zoning Commission's approval, planning staff recommends approval as well. Thank you. And so the applicant, so uh, commissioners will open the item for public hearing. The applicant is really um, the council member, but is there any other owners in support or Lisa? Um, council member O'Connell did send a letter to the commissioners indicating that he would not be able to be present today. Um, he provided me with some information um, in case once we hear the opposition that if I need to, to present that I can, but he did send a letter indicating he would not be able to attend today. Okay. So we'll go on to anyone wishing to speak in support of the overlay. Come on up. And um, we're, we're going to do the microphone, yeah, right in the seat that way. And then you have to push the button, I believe, if it's not green. Push. Okay. Perfect. And then just state your name sure. for the, and address for the record. Um, it's Meg Hershey, 224 Summit Ridge Drive. Um, good evening. Um, as a local historic preservation professional and just someone that loves Nashville, I'm a Nashvilleian, been here about 13 years, I support the expansion of this downtown overlay. I would like to express my sincere thanks to the longtime property owners that own property in this area and have stewarded these historic buildings um, without any additional regulation over them. But just given the growth in our city and, you know, just uncertain times of sales of properties and things like that. I do believe that this is a very important tool. I also believe that we need to further provide opportunities to protect these investments um, that these property owners have made. So I support any further development on the bonus height program. I believe that's coming back before you all later this, excuse me, later this fall, um, and potential uh, investigation of a uh, transfer of development rights program. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Come on up. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Dennis Daniels. I'm an architect uh, in Nashville, historic preservationist in heart. Uh, I'd like to speak on, both, on behalf of this project, not as an owner, but as a constituent, as a citizen, and as an architect. I am supportive of this, uh, opposite, of this uh, overlay and believe it's definitely meaningful for the continuation for preservation in Nashville. Uh, and I think there are some considerations to con continue on, like that was mentioned previously about uh, bonus height programs and other things. I would edge into consideration that we also look closely about the O'Reilly districts and what they're actually performing and providing versus the aspects they're trying to preserve. And I think we need to strengthen those aspects and continue to develop those as, as, as a whole, uh, especially as we go into a new decade uh, in a new era of preservation, uh, where we can go just from holding it as it is and really pushing it beyond to, to create places that really involve and include the historic preservation that we're trying to, 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 to keep uh, around. Um, that's all I have to say, so appreciate your time and thanks for having me here. Thank you, appreciate you coming down. Anyone else? Come on up. Chairman, I think we are running the timer. It just for some reason isn't showing up on the screen. So it is going at two minutes, but we, no one can, public can't see it. Um, so we'll give it one, give us one second. And then we're sorry to interrupt your presentation, but we'll get right to you. Just keep saying hello. <laughs> yes. Yes, sorry. Chairman, how many planners does it take to make a timer work? Not, not. Too many. Not too many. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm not going to answer that. Okay. We might need an engineer. No, I'm just kidding. Planners are always fighting with engineers. It's inside joke, everybody. So, but I'll um, out. I'll just let it okay, like. <laughs> And then we'll we'll give everybody some leeway. So you have two minutes, and please state your name and address. Thank you. Hello, how are y'all? I'm Kelly Bannon, 3707 Princeton Avenue. Um, my parents and family moved here in 83. Um, and I'm the president and co-founder of the Preservation Society of Nashville. We so appreciate the hard work of staff and the many supporters of this effort. It's many years in the making. We fully support the proposed expansion of the downtown historic preservation overlay. We also want to highlight that the expanded area encompasses architecturally significant historic structures that are truly tangible reminders of important eras in our city's history, stories of Nashville's commerce and entertainment industries of the late 19th and 20th centuries. Um, as of 2019, historic preservation and conservation overlay districts made up just 12% of parcels and 6% of the land area in Nashville and adding these approximately 40 parcels is a, a, a crucially important step in the preservation of Music City. And I also want to highlight something that's been brought up already which is um, we believe that two things can be true at the same time. We fully support this expansion but we also acknowledge um, that Nashville is a growing economic center and these property owners who were really grateful for their stewardship over the many decades, um, they deserve tools and resources that don't stunt their own economic vitality. Therefore, the society also supports the further development of the bonus height program and other future planning tools and models that support commerce and preservation. We believe we can have both and I thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. Welcome. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm Cyril Stewart. I'm at 3813 Whitland Avenue here in Nashville. I uh, grew up in Nashville and remember seeing, you know, all these downtown buildings growing up. But, you know, 60 years ago, Jane Jacobs wrote the Bible on historic preservation, on uh, urban planning. And that Bible on urban planning devoted an entire chapter to the importance of historic buildings. Uh, as we go into this, the, the biggest threat to historic preservation is affluence and, and, uh, and great economic conditions. We're certainly seeing those times now. We were able to keep Second Avenue because of the insight of a lot of people and some economic conditions that didn't support their removal. Uh, we are now at a point where we have uh, so much going on in this town. The buildings that are within this overlay are architecturally significant. 83% are contributing buildings. Uh, it, they're some of the most vibrant streets in town, the ones that add to the authenticity that we really believe in and pride ourselves on having in, in Nashville. Um, it's uh, Printer's Alley, 4th Avenue, uh, Church Street, Union, 3rd Avenue, so some of those most vital areas of the downtown. And so we actually uh, urge that you support this and approve this as a recommendation to the council. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? And then if you have handouts, you can give them to the team. And we'll get them. Let's, let's get them to the commissioners before you start speaking. Just give us a second and we'll hand these out. That way we're all paying attention to you when you're speaking. Yeah. Thank you, Stuart. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. But you'll have to speak into the microphone. There we go. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Morrison, live at 4100 Valewood Drive in Green Hills. 
I'm one of the owners of 323 and 325 Union Street. We expose the expansion of the downtown historic district to the extent it includes our properties which are on the periphery of the ex proposed expansion. I request the Planning Commission recommend that the Union Street properties be removed from the proposed expansion. I have provided the commissioners with a small packet containing some photos of the area that surround our building. The photos correspond to my July 24 letter and show the non-contributing buildings in our immediate area. These non-contributing buildings mean Union Street does not meet the definition of an historic zone under Tennessee law or the Metro Code. The staff report states there must be significant concentration, linkages, or continuity of sites and structures. The Union Street properties do not meet this definition. There are two small clusters of four buildings on Union Street. Nothing else sets there. In addition, the staff report never discusses or gives a reason why 323 through 329 should be included within the expanded district. Thus, the record does not contain any evidence or analysis of why the zone should include these buildings and therefore we request the Planning Commission correct the error of the Historic Zoning Commission in expanding it. We also expose the expansion because the properties are already subject to the MDHA Capitol Hill uh, Mall Redevelopment District and including these properties to those layers uh, to the expansion and the additional layers of regulation takes away valuable property rights. Now I want to show the first picture in the package shows our building at 323 Union. In 2009, a portion of the facade of the building uh, collapsed. We worked with MDHA and restored it. Now, this is the left-hand building. As you can tell, we were good stewards of building the building, and we think MDHA regulation is more than adequate. And I repeat again what we heard from the historical group. You can finish your thought, okay. of course. That from the historical group that we have been good stewards. And until we know what the situation is with the bonus height restriction or what we can do, we have to oppose because if we're taking away an economic benefit, my partners won't may, let me come in and uh, work with anybody because I don't know the answer. Okay. We don't know what's going to happen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next. Hi, my name is Dan Ford. I represent the owners of 419 Union. Um, address is 9518 Elmbrook Boulevard. Um, uh, in effect, we've got two small clusters of old buildings, and a number of which are no longer entitled to be labeled as historic. The entire north side of Union Street are all modern high-rise buildings. The height of the buildings in the Nashville Financial Historic District fronts on Union. The Indigo Hotel and American Trust buildings are four, or five, four to five times higher than our building. So as Mark mentioned, we can't support it until we kind of know the economic uh, outcome of the process. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Welcome. Doug Sloan, uh, 6354 Torrington Road, and my family's been here for over six generations in Nashville. I was born and raised here. Uh, I'm familiar with, very familiar with this area of town and represent over a half dozen of the properties that are identified uh, in the overlay of the proposal of the expansion of the overlay. And I would tell you that uh, a number of them are perfectly happy with this expansion and being a part of it. And the ones that are, are the ones that have already worked with historic and already worked with planning uh, to redevelop their properties. Uh, and they've achieved those bonuses that were just discussed um, for that preservation. Um, and the ones that have not achieved that, uh, that haven't redeveloped the properties or renovated uh, those properties completely are opposed to it uh, for the simple fact that the expansion of the overlay removes their leverage uh, and the value of that property that might be obtained through uh, development uh, and not just development of that property but something that I've spoken to this commission and to the historic uh, preservation board uh, about before and that is the rewrite of the DTC, within the rewrite of the DTC and the ability to, to increase the bonuses for historic preservation is the key pin to get everybody, all of these property owners on board. Uh, there's an opportunity to have all of them here speaking in favor of this expansion, but it lies with the, the changes to the DTC and the, uh, the expansion of the entitlements that are exchanged for historic preservation. Today, 
the DTC doesn't properly uh, encourage historic preservation. Uh, as a matter of fact, compared to the economics of tearing a historic building down and, and rebuilding it, 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 it serves no purpose. It serves no leverage against that. Uh, but if you will multiply those entitlements so that the people who own those historic buildings can sell those development rights as TDRs uh, to development going on downtown, then it will work to that advantage. And we would ask that you simply either allow those those property owners to carve themselves out of the overlay, the ones that uh, that haven't Thank you, uh, worked that out, or uh, defer it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on up. Welcome. Hey guys, doing? My name is Kazra. Um, I live in 3537 Carruthers Parkway in Franklin. I'm here on behalf of uh, Rocker Properties, uh, owner of 327 and 329 Union Street. Um, I want to second what Mark said. Um, we have um, owned the Union Street for quite some time, did some renovation with it, worked very closely with MDHA to kind of get to our goals of what we're trying to do. Um, and until we kind of figure out with what the advantages are with going to historic, um, I, I kindly ask you guys to kind of defer this meeting until we kind of figure out some more. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, uh, Lisa, we'll recognize you with uh, comments from the council member. Sure. Um, the council member, council member O'Connell, in his letter um, to you all that is on the SharePoint file and is, is shared publicly, um, indicated that he does expect that there would be amendments to the proposed map prior to third reading. Um, there is the ability to amend uh, zoning map or zoning ordinances up until third reading. Um, this is planned for public hearing and second reading next week, and then two weeks later would be the planned third reading. Um, he said that he does not consider the boundaries to be final and is willing to um, amend the boundaries based on um, information that he's hearing. Thank you. That's very helpful. Uh, the council member is not here, so seeing no one else wishing to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. Uh, Councilman, do you want to start us off uh, and then we'll call? Since Freddie's not here, uh, well, Councilman O'Connell, sorry. You know, ironically enough, I run into a lot of people and they're like, are you on Metro Council? I'm like, I am. And they're like, are you Freddie O'Connell? And I said, no, I'm his evil twin. Um, so, um, but I'm not the evil twin. That's today. why I called on you. I'm going to support uh, my colleague today. Uh, I know Councilmember O'Connell has been um, so involved with uh, the downtown area in District 19 for many years as a neighborhood leader, uh, long before serving on council, and has worked very diligently on preservation efforts all during our service together for these past eight years. I, I know that Councilmember O'Connell also is uh, very um, supportive of growth and development in the downtown district and has um, kind of balanced out short-term rentals and ha tourism and also overseeing it turn into one of the fastest growing residential neighborhoods in the county. So I uh, um, value obviously the information from historic staff uh, and was able to be present at the historic zoning commission earlier um, and, and I know that Councilmember O'Connell will be very thoughtful uh, in working with property owners to set those boundaries on third reading um, and so I am in support of the staff recommendation and of my colleague. So thank you. Thank you and I, I should mention that um, Ms. Ziegler, Robin Ziegler is here, the director of historic and so um, I want to make sure, do you have anything to add, Director, before, that could help? Okay, and if we have questions, then I just wanted the commissioners to know that she's here willing to answer any questions that, that we have. And thank you, by the way, for coming. We really appreciate it. All right, any other discussion? Commissioner Clifton. Uh, this is, I think, maybe one of the first times I've had to deal with downtown issues. Um, where property owners were not supportive. Um, I know we've had a lot of residential overlays where, um, uh, including parts of the 18th district where I've lived for a long time, where it's not been exactly 100%, um, but it's been very overwhelming. And in many of those cases, 
the contour district was based on excluding those which were not ready for it. I, I'm just, I want to ask for information. Are there areas downtown which have this overlay against the will of the owners? We'll get the director of historic to answer that. And just, if you could, state your name for the record and title. I'm Robin Ziegler. I'm the Historic Zoning Administrator for the Historic Zoning Commission. And um, every overlay has had support and people who are against it as well. Um, I think you saw that, I'm trying to remember the numbers. The, what I looked at just based on people I've talked to, um, I don't have any formal emails or letters or anything, but just based on discussions and what we've heard in the community meeting, about 20% support it, or more, probably about 30%, and probably about 30% that are against it, and the others we haven't heard from, so I have to assume that they're at least okay with it. Um, so yeah, all of the overlays, there's been support, and there's been people who are against it as well. Downtown, we have the 2nd Avenue, District Broadway, and the downtown overlay currently has two properties in it. Director. And if I may, you know, Commissioner, we heard from, we have a booklet from two members. It wasn't quite clear if they're joint owners, but two buildings in, on at Union Street who don't support this. So we have at least evidence here that that's the case. And then Mr. Sloan noted that he represented some um, folks who aren't supportive. But this, this, um, reflects opposition on based on specific properties i've been a supporter of overlays for a long time while on the council and on this commission can't vote for this one um i don't think it's quite ready for prime time <laughs> I, I think it's maybe driven by the end of a term which i understand um but i I may be the only one. I just, um, I love living in the district I live in. I love the fact that the majority of it is pre preserved through conservation overlays, at least. Uh, that came about after long, long discussions and something near unanimity, if not unanimity. Um, I don't see myself as a major property rights zealot, but for me, this is a bridge too far right now. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other discussion? Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Um, we discussed at the Historic Zoning uh, Commission last week, and we heard from opposition or rather concern because some property owners uh, want to be excluded. Uh, as a body, uh, we recommended uh, uh, approval because it meets policy. And also, you know, when we talk about policy, uh, we talk about Nashville Next. That is uh, Nashville general plan for, you know, 20, 30 years. The beauty of the Nashville Next is we uh, go for growth and preservation. And we do have, you know, growth, and we encourage a high-rise building and in downtown core. At the same time, we emphasize how important to preserve Second Avenue, Printers Alley, not only building itself, but uh, the culture and economic development that time uh, associated with those buildings. So I think, in that sense, uh, expanding historic zoning overlay is very very important to preserve those culture, uh, not only building. And also, you know, once you are included in historic zoning uh, overlay, uh, the property owner can take advantage of tax abatement program. And also, I think now we are talking about a DTC uh, amendment, so they can utilize, uh, you know, property rights. So I think uh, this one, we have been, as a historic uh, commission and also uh, council member have been talking more than two years. 
And I think it's just finally came to the point uh, we can, you know, move forward. So I would like the fellow commissioner to encourage to approve it. And of course, this is a zoning bill. A council member O'Connell can, if he sees a community and a property owner sees fit, a certain building can be excluded. But I believe it's not for us to uh, pick you know, which building should be included or excluded. So I'm comfortable recommending as is uh, recommended by the staff and then uh, encourage council member to if indeed uh, some exclusion is uh, warranted, uh, keep going forward to have that conversation and amend at the council. So for that reason, I'm 100% support. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Smith. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Uh, this is for staff. Is there, uh, may not be a short answer, is there a short answer on what the main difference between current MDHA regulations would be and what it would be after this overlay was uh, put into place? Their main goal is not preservation, although it's a big part of what they do. But the main thing that they don't do is control demolition. This is the only tool in the city that controls demolition. And I don't mean completely disallows all of it. Sometimes old buildings need to come down but it does have some control over it. So that's the only tool that's gonna prevent that demolition. Thank you. Any other questions from the commissioners? Commissioner Clifton. All of my sympathies are with preserving this. I spent Saturday on 8th Avenue at a historic building that, that's right across from the um, Frost Building at the Sunday School Board. I've forgotten the name of the building. Somebody knows it in here. Um, and it was a wonderful experience. I'm so glad that that's being restored. Um, I just, it's a, a little bit of a foreign concept to me to, to override what the property owner, 100% of the property owners for certain structures want. But the commissioner's correct. There are two different functions here. One is the political function of weighing the balance and all of that, and the other is, as a policy matter, what do we think is right for the city? Uh, and that, that helps me, and of course, you're, you're right on that. Um, so I'm not gonna vote against it, even though I think it does, it's a puzzling thing <laughs> to me that uh, it hasn't been able, I, I just think it needs more time, but, but that's not a planning statement. And I'm, I'm okay with voting for it today because of that. We're happy. We can enter into the record um, and our advice to the councilman, which is our capacity here, that if this is the sense of the commission, that we think this meets the policy and we support it, but recommend that he work with those property owners who are opposed to their property uh, being included. We can certainly include that in the record. I think I would agree that it's not for this body with this information to re you know remove properties, um, but I think it does support Nashville Next objectives, and I think we can send that signal that you're asking about to the councilman, and he can take it under um, consideration. Director, I, I think that's great. I, I too share uh, Commissioner Clifton and Commissioner Johnson's feelings. You know, I agree with both of them actually. And um, I always, I'm not a huge, well, I guess I am more of a property rights guy probably than than a lot of the commissioners. But I just, I have a hard time uh, doing government, reg any type of government regulation or um, prohibition on somebody that doesn't agree to that on their own property. And so I share that concern. I think that's a good solution, director, potentially. And so um, definitely share those same concerns. Is there a motion, Commissioner? Oh, discussion. We're still on discussion. Commissioner Henley. I just heard this mentioned, and hopefully I'm not missing something, but there was discussion of um, amendment to the downtown code, which I think is kind of with this body. And I'm, I'm curious of are those functions running parallel with this or kind of the staggering of time? Because what we heard from some of the opposition is they're uncertain of 
a few things. I think at least that might be one we could we could describe here today. So our, our design studio is undertaking a review and analysis of the downtown code um, that's under Joni Williams' team. Um, um, and we've had one work session with the commission to talk about what your goals would be and ensure that we're in alignment there. I do think historic preservation is going to be a, a goal, and we're going to want to look at the entitlements um, within those areas and make sure that we understand all the tools and levers that can be accomplished, so that is occurring. We wanted to um, supplement our work with some baseline market analysis, and so that's what we're preparing. Uh, today and so um, we're, we're hearing and getting all of this input and we want to make a, a great path for the property owners who have historic structures but also ensure that we're taking into account the overall economic uh, conditions and so I anticipate um, bringing this back to the Commission in the fall. Thank you for that and, and the comments previously discussed I mean they, they address some of my initial concerns very much spoken by, by Commissioner Clifton. Um, all the considerations that are taking place here help me feel better about that. Um, and I know we're, we're not supposed to augment what the map is, but I think there's a pretty clear delineation of support and lack of support based on the correspondence we've gotten of, of where those are. So, I, again, I think our advisement to, to, um, to Councilmember O'Connell is pretty clearly, you know, transferable based on what we've received. So I'm... I'm more comfortable now than I was just just a few moments earlier. So thank you for that. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other discussion? So it's time for a motion. Uh, I make a motion to approve uh, with a condition uh, Council Member O'Connell uh, continue to work with the property owners to redefine the boundary. Especially on Union Street, right? Especially on Union Street, is that correct? Okay, I just want to make sure. Union story. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be a little specific. Thank you, Commissioner. That's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And thank you, Commissioners, for that. And so that concludes uh, items to be considered on the regular part, but we are now under H, which is other business, which is item number, oh, hold on one second. Someone that was speaking at the table left their sunglasses and Abby has them, if they are yours. Public service. Sorry, yes, Abby has someone's right. glasses. You get full service around the Planning Commission. All right, so now we're on other business. And so we are on to um, new employee contracts and so, I'm, I've been working with uh, the staff team on this and, and with the director and with Mr. Rooker. And um, I want to thank George for all of his work on this. It's been a lot of work, director. And I just I want to say that publicly that he's worked really hard on this. I know the commissioners um, have gotten an email, and we're going to pass something out. But, uh, Commissioner, uh, Mr. Rooker, do you want to just kind of tell us an intro and what we're looking at so that the commissioners kind of know what's going on? Yes, I, I, it's working. Yes, I'll be I'll be happy to, and thank you. I am George Rooker with the Planning Department. Uh, I did send out an email a few uh, days ago to explain some information about the uh, uh, FY24 budget and the pay plan and in particular a classification study that was conducted by metro hr for some of our planning positions uh, hr does conduct classification studies periodically for positions within the metro pay plan uh, they actually conducted a study of our planner three positions about five or six years ago and increased that position by one pay grade this year they studied our planner ones twos planning manager ones and planning manager two positions and increased each of those positions each of those positions by one pay grade which is equivalent to an increase in the minimum and maximum salary for those pay grades of about 10 percent 
and that's before the 6% COLA was applied. So those positions received roughly 15 to six, well, 16% uh, increase in pay uh, for those positions. Uh, and um, uh, the, that went into effect on July 1 of this year, and we're really grateful to Metro HR for that study. They did that by comparing the planning positions with other positions within Metro, and they did, uh, did that at our request to try to help us uh, re recruit and retain really qualified employees. So we appreciate that from them. Thank you, George. And I, I don't, I truly don't think this would have happened without Mr. Rooker and the team kind of pushing on HR. And so I want to say thank you on the classifications. It's a really, really big deal. Uh, I've been here a long time. We've had some turnover in the past. And it's really hard to find, um, once somebody leaves, it costs the city a, a lot of money in training and um, getting them up to speed. And so uh, I think this is a really important part. Um, and so I want to say thank you, and um, I really appreciate it. So the team is here to ask any answer any questions, and but I wanted to make sure that you all know, knew that um, – that we worked with the team and the executive committee, and I think this is a, a really big deal for us. Any questions? Any? We'll need a, uh, well, we'll need a motion, and so I think it's a very specific motion, and I think Commissioner Clifton is going to give us that motion. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I, it's my understanding that when it comes to uh, specifically the executive director position, that our, our pro process is that this must be and should be voted on by the commission itself. So my, uh, my motion is that we accept the proposed um, increase uh, in addition to what has been described of 6% um, as uh, an additional 9% of open range increase, which comes directly from our executive committee as a recommendation. I've had a chance to look at the salaries of department heads in Metro, and um, with this addition, there will still be a large number of department heads who apparently are considered to have either a more difficult or harder job than being the head of the planning commission and department. I don't quite understand how that could be possible, but that's sort of beyond today's scope. So. I would uh, move that we accept the recommendation of the executive committee uh, provides for the COLA uh, that comes to all Metro employees, but is, has an additional 9% open range increase based upon the studies that's been conducted. So that's, so this is really two things. You got the executive director's pay raise and then all the other employees as well. And so thank you, um, Commissioner Clifton, for that. And I, I do want to say I'm I'm very proud of our executive director. Uh, she has um, led the team, and, and I, I feel, I really do feel this, and um, that the culture has, um, is in a really good, good spot with the team. It's not always perfect, but I think that it's, it's in a really good spot, and we have an outstanding staff there, and I think a lot of that is due to our executive director, Lucy Kemp, and I have enjoyed working with her. She, um, this job, as Stuart alluded to, Commissioner Clifton, uh, that it, you have to have political acumen and you have to have a planning degree and background. And I think that sometimes that's hard to find in um, planners and, and engineers. And we're lucky to have um, one of those people. So I, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I know that um, the commissioners have. And so this is really important. Thank you, Commissioner Clifton, for the, the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And all of the raises in pay plans are adopted. Congratulations, Director Kemp. All right. So historic. We're on item 32 under H, historic. Yes, uh, we understand uh, Historic Zoning Commission will be having the presentation by planning staff about middle housing presentation next month, so we are very looking forward to have it. 
Commissioner Hanley, Parks. Uh, yes, yeah, so at the last Parks meeting, we had the pleasure of having a presentation of the Parks staff, uh, the planning staff's efforts um, and presentation to Parks um, on the Bellmead Highlands, and I believe are on the agenda for our August 1st meeting. So again, double dose of planning. So really looking forward to, to that again, um, but excited to um, help support and facilitate um, that level of collaboration and exchange between departments. Thank you, Commissioner. And Executive Committee, really the work has been around the, the pay raises and, and employee retention, and so we've already stated that. And then I think we only have one meeting in August, August 24th, and it will be yeah. here in Lisa in this building, in this room, just yes. as a um, reminder. Okay. Yes, I think the next two meetings, two meetings. are okay. here. Yep. So, Commissioners, if you just make a note of that, and then we'll go back to our regularly two times a month meetings, and that's under I in, in the other business. All right, so now we are on to the director's report. Well, um, I, too, just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge um, George, but also the planning teams who work incredibly hard. And so often, um, I think work can go unnoticed. You're working in the background. You're trying to solve issues. And it's my hope that the staff knows that we are committed to the new staff that we bring on, but also the longtime staff members who really make the department um, wiser um, every day with the knowledge that they have of the city and I'm, I'm really grateful. I do also um, want to note um, that um, during, because the department has been able to bring uh, additional resources to bear, we've been able to structure in a way that I think improves our decision making and helps um, our team be able to, to function uh, better, including a new uh, assistant director role of um, land development. And I was so excited that Lisa Milligan accepted um, that role. Um, Lisa. Lisa has been um, with the department for about um, nine years, and when I first got here, um, she was processing about 90 cases with maybe three land development staff members, and it was a it was a really tense moment, and she just showed a lot of leadership um, during that moment because land development had had shrunk, um, and this was about six years ago, and since then I've worked with her to um, build a larger uh, team there that's better able to handle the immense workload that we have. But I just want to thank Lisa for her extraordinary work at council, her extraordinary work on the planning commission, answering questions. It's talk about a unique skill set to be able to handle the administrative. And it turns out can also fix the clock um, pretty quickly. So I don't mean that's pretty good. So anyway, at Lisa. Congrats, and it well deserved. And that's it, Chairman. Thank you, Director. And Lisa, we're we're so glad. We're always. Where's Lisa? What's the? Yes. Lisa knows that answer. So thank you very much for your service. Um, thank you, Director. All right, Legislative Report. Well, um, next Tuesday is the big night, um, so we'll see how late our public hearing goes, and I'll have, it will be all Brett Withers all night, because I've got three items, and they will not go as smoothly as they did tonight. Um, but so, wish the council luck next week, um, and then we're uh, wrapping up on the 15th, so we are drawing to a close. Did want to mention, there's an item that we had come before the commission before, which is about, we used to call it traffic impact studies, and now they're calling it access management studies, or... Well, a um, different day, new name. Um, but uh, there is some ongoing work with that that is taking place in the council office, at least when I left, um, uh, in terms of working with NDOT uh, and maybe some others to do some amendments and substitutes, mostly just to clarify language and things like that. But I know how important uh, uh, that uh, issue is uh, when cases come before the commission in terms of like what, what about traffic and what about mo multimobility and that's so important to the, the work that we uh, as a city um, 
need to think a little bit more globally about uh, rather than each individual parcel. So uh, that's important, but uh, council offices continue to work on that. That one is also on public hearing on Tuesday, but we may have some amendments on that that hopefully make it a little bit clearer for everybody. But other than that, I think um, well, we're counting, some of us are counting down the days, but. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. It's been, it's been an honor and a pleasure to serve on the council, for sure. Thank you, Councilman. And it's not his last meeting. He has another meeting. So we, we, we can't say goodbye yet, Councilman. We'll wait for that. All right. So that, that concludes our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? We're adjourned. been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.